Hey everybody, Josh here for episode 100 of the Solopreneur Grind podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. I wanted to do something a little different for episode 100 because number one, it's a pretty cool number and a pretty awesome accomplishment. And number two, as many of you know, most of my episodes revolve around uh, interviewing very cool guests. And what I wanted to do in in thinking of something special for episode 100, which to be honest, I don't know if I ever thought I was going to make it to, was pay a little homage to the show and the guests that we've had. So my thinking is for episode 100, what I want to do is, it's not going to be the longest episode, but what I did want to do is talk a little bit about the inception of the show, kind of where I was at the time and the reasons for why I even started the podcast way back in the day. Uh, talk a little bit about where it's come, some of the guests that I've had on the show, and update you guys, which I don't often do on the actual podcast, on where I'm at in my life right now, because it's I I think that I've come a long way since starting the show as well in a few ways, and I thought that that might make for some interesting content. So anyways, let's jump in. Like I said, this won't be the longest episode. Most Most of my interviews last 30, 40, 50 minutes sometimes. Uh, I plan to come on for, you know, 10, 20 minutes, talk a little bit about the inception, and hopefully you guys will find that interesting. I also want to quickly let you know that I am back to recording, so sometimes I'll take some breaks, take the month or two off from having guests. Uh, I have recorded, actually, episodes 101 and 102, so those are ready to come out. Keep an, keep your eyes peeled, some pretty awesome entrepreneurs that I've been able to interview and those episodes will be really good too. Part of the motivation to get this episode recorded was I realized that uh, I started having more guests on and I was recording them as episodes 101 and episode 102 and I said crap it's about time that I probably record and release uh, episode 100. So here we are. But anyways what I want to do firstly is take you back to where it all began and what I actually did right before hitting record was I went on to my Podbean account that's the platform I used to host the show to actually see when the first episode went live because I haven't really looked back since then and was uh, pleasantly surprised today is October the 28th 2021 the first episode of the Solopreneur Grind podcast was actually released on September the 18th 2018. So a little bit more than three years ago, and we've got over a hundred episodes, which is really awesome. Uh, I, I wasn't really sure where the show would go. I had an idea for why I wanted to start the show and what I, you know, thought it might become, but um, I, I never really thought about getting to this point. Right, episode 100. I remember reading stories or stats along the way when I was especially when I was doing research into beginning it for the first place about how some crazy percentage like 90 to 95 percent of podcasts on iTunes have fewer than five episodes or you know some crazy stat like that and I knew I just didn't want to be one of those statistics Uh, so to take you back a little bit at the time September of 2018 I was a lawyer, I still am a lawyer, practicing in the realm of Canadian immigration. So I was helping primarily Canadian companies uh, bring in skilled workers from outside of the country, and I had my own small practice. And life was pretty good in the sense that it it had taken me about a year, but I was starting to grow my own practice and create a half-decent living for myself. But I remember getting to a point where, especially as a solopreneur, because I had no other full-time staff, feeling a little bit, uh, I guess, lonely would be one way to call it, and a little out of touch with, uh, you know, especially compared to people who are working in big companies, traveling a lot, uh, communicating with a lot of people, all that kind of stuff. And I just remember thinking that I needed some sort of other outlet where I could talk with, communicate with, build relationships with other entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, etc., etc. And I was a big consumer of content in the sense that I love listening to podcasts too. But what I found was a lot of the shows, the kind of entrepreneurial shows I was listening to, it was mostly just famous people interviewing famous people about how they got famous or, you know, not necessarily famous, but, you know, overly wealthy, overly successful And what I wanted to do was just chat with other people like me that had figured out ways to 
earn a good living for themselves. Maybe they weren't billionaires. Maybe they weren't millionaires. But maybe they were able to start their own business or work for themselves and earn a good living. And I wanted to hear about their stories too. I also wanted to be able to ask questions because I'd be listening to some of these podcasts and sometimes based on the background of the guest or what they were talking about, I had additional questions that I wanted to know the answer to. So my thinking was starting the podcast and, and ever since I've spoken to many people who've asked me, you know, what's it like starting a show? How, you know, what if I wanted to do it? What are the steps, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe uh, there's potential there to kind of create a sort of guide. But anyways, that's another conversation. Uh, I remember thinking to myself, you know what? Why don't I just start? I can keep it really simple. And the beauty of starting, especially an interview, well, the beauty of starting a podcast in general is that the content is easy to create. Because if you're going to do it yourself, all you need is yourself and a microphone. And if you're going to do it with guests, what I didn't realize is there's so many groups and lists and websites dedicated to helping people guest on podcasts. So finding guests was actually one of the easiest parts. I remember I joined a few Facebook groups and before I knew it, I had, you know, dozens of people asking to come on as a guest, even though the show didn't exist, right? Like I, I didn't have a brand at that point. The solopreneur grind wasn't a thing. Nobody had heard about it. I'd say once I got to like episode 20, episode 30, that's when people started just cold reaching out. But until then, and I guess this is a quick tip for those looking to start your own show, especially to interview people on, is just go on Facebook and type in podcast guest and go join a few groups that focus on helping people find podcast guests. That's what I did. And it was pretty easy. You'd be surprised how many people are looking to guest on podcasts. And from there, it was just a matter of usually what would happen is I would have somebody on and then I would ask them at the end, hey, do you know anybody else? Do you have any other suggestions for someone else who might want to be a guest on the show? And uh, that led to other introductions and meeting new people and having more guests. And as your episodes get up there in the count and as your downloads start to increase, uh, it got to a point where now I don't reach out to anybody really. I, I, I have... Um, inbound from people at agencies or just individuals from companies who reach out and say, hey, can I be on the show? Uh, so that makes life a little bit easier. But basically, the reason I started the show was just to scratch my own itch. I figured, listen, I'll be able to talk to cool people, learn their stories, pick up some tips along the way. And who knows, you know, maybe this will explode, maybe it won't. But worst case, I'll get to meet cool people, I'll get to expand my network, I'll get to learn from their stories, and you never know. And so it's been, I guess, uh, three years, three years and a month, about three years and a month, over a hundred episodes later, and here we are, and it's it's been really cool. I've spoken to a ton of people, right, quite literally about 95 plus guests, and ranging everything across the map. I've had consultants, I've had coaches, I've had content creators, I've had SaaS, you know, techies, I've had tech co-founders, I've had professional athletes, I've had freelancers, I've had, you know, retirees, to, uh, uh, the whole gambit, you know. Uh, part, part of what I like now is when potential guests reach out, is especially if there's someone that I've never interviewed in the sense that I've never interviewed someone with that profession before. Uh, it's really cool to kind of add them, add them to the list. I think one of the important things when starting out, whether it be business or a podcast or a social media channel, is have a plan of where you want to start, but don't overthink the end goal too much, right? Because I didn't know where the show would go. I still don't really know where the show would go. I do know that I've had 100 episodes and they've been really great and I've met awesome people that I wouldn't have been able to meet otherwise. Um, but I still don't know where the show might take me, right? The other thing I wanted to quickly do as well is check out the statistics because um, right now, and I don't know if this is just from like a couple platforms or if this is from all the platforms because I host the podcast on Podbean 
but it's also listed almost everywhere, right? I post it on YouTube, on iTunes, on Spotify, on Amazon Music, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, probably some others too. I don't even know. So I don't know if Podbean can actually pick up all of those downloads. But on Podbean alone, over 11,000 downloads for the podcast. So to think, especially three years ago, that anybody would want to listen to some of my shows or that over, you know, it would be downloaded over 11,000 times. It's uh, it's pretty cool, and it's pretty important, I guess, to go, to keep an eye on that information. I, I don't check that data very often, to be honest, but to every once in a while look back because it it's uh, it's rewarding, right? In the sense that not that I'm doing it for the numbers, but sometimes we get busy with everyday life and stress and worry and hey, is this working? Am I doing stuff right? And so to be able to go back to some numbers and say, hey, you know, a lot of people have listened to the show and hopefully a lot of people have gotten a lot of value from the show just like I have. And, uh, you know, that in and of itself, I think, is a good reason to start a podcast. Um, some of the episodes have gotten hundreds, if not thousands of listens, which is which is really cool. And I think as long as I enjoy doing it, which I still do, I still love interviewing people. I, I don't even really consider it interviewing. I consider it just more of having friendly and insightful conversations with people. And as long as I'm enjoying that and learning from that, which I think will be quite some time, then I'll definitely uh, definitely continue to do it. So that's kind of you know one area that I wanted to touch on, which is you know where I was and why I kind of started the show. And the other thing I wanted to quickly talk about is where we're at now and uh, give you guys a little bit of a personal update just because I'm a slightly different person from when I started it a little over three years ago. And in the episodes, I don't do too much talking about myself. And uh, maybe there's some interest in that too. I, I will say if you are interested in following my story a little bit more closely, then definitely sign up for my email list. I send an email every two weeks. And I give an update on my business, what I'm thinking about, business ideas, uh, recent business books or personal development books I've read. Uh, so definitely check that out. You can find it uh, either solopreneurgrind.com slash join. I'll put the link down below. Or you can also find it at joshacknow.com slash join as well. So definitely check that out. Anyways, where are we right now? So when I started the podcast, I was a sole practitioner operating my own immigration law firm. And I'm not going to tell the whole story of between then and now because that would probably be a whole podcast episode in and of itself, which maybe we should do at some point. But basically where we're at now is I've actually joined forces with another immigration lawyer. So we have a slightly bigger law firm now, the two of us with our two legal assistants. So we have a team of four and also the co-founder of a tech company called Visto.ai, where we're building a platform that actually automates the immigration process for Canadian tech companies. So it's been a long and, well, not long, but it's been a fun journey in the sense that when I started the podcast, I was working by myself, you know, on a law firm. And I look back uh, over, over a three-year time period. And since then, we've, you know, expanded and partnered to grow the firm and things are going really well for the firm right now as well as where I'm most focused on is our tech company that uh, we just completed a pre-seed fundraise for which is super exciting and I'm now working with a small team to uh, build and launch our MVP which will hopefully be going live by the end of this year 2021. So from solo lawyer to you know small law firm uh, partner and uh, tech co-founder it's been a lot of fun and still trying to find the time to fit in the podcast stuff because i just enjoy it uh, i feel like you know no matter where i'm at or, or what i'm doing as long as i have the time and the interest i'll probably continue with the show uh, one of the main benefits as i've alluded to earlier is just the people that i've been able to to meet very few of them in person although a bunch of guests i actually do know personally uh, so a bunch of the guests I, I do know in person, but the majority of guests I don't know in person, I've never met them in person, but it's surprising how great of a connection, how much you can learn, how close you can get with people, even though you've never, you've never met them. Uh, some people live, uh, I live in Canada, 
a bunch of my guests are Canadian. A big majority of them are probably American. I've also had a ton of guests from around the world, in Europe, in Asia, in South America. So it's uh, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Again, I could probably do a whole episode on the benefits of starting a podcast or tips on how to start a podcast. If you guys have any feedback, please let me know. Feel free to reach out, uh, especially if you sign up for the email list. You'll you'll get my emails right away. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. There wasn't much more I wanted to talk about. I wanted to keep this episode relatively short, a quick update about myself, a little blurb on, on why I started the show. Uh, give myself a little bit of you know selfish pat on the back because again I, I never really I never thought I couldn't get to episode 100 I just didn't really think that far ahead and while sometimes it's important to plan into the future sometimes if you really want to do something I guess the key takeaway is just do it and as long as you're working hard and and intelligently then don't worry too too much about what the what the future might be because if it's as long as you're going in the right direction you'll kind of uh, figure it out so anyways that's it for me folks episode 100 wanted to say a big thank you to you as well whether this is the first episode you're listening to and you're just about to dive into a whole bunch of my other interviews or whether you've been you know maybe you've listened to a couple and and you're a more recent listener, or whether you've been listening for dozens and dozens of episodes, and just wanted to keep uh, keep follow uh, keep following along. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, d- I don't like I said I don't do it for the metrics and the stats, but it means that much more knowing that hopefully other people are listening, other people are getting value from the episodes, from the guests that I'm having on, and maybe some of the insights I'm able to to sneak into the episodes uh, as well. So anyways, thank you again so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Please keep an eye out for future episodes. They'll be coming out almost every week. You can keep track on the websites. And uh, again, if you're interested to follow, uh, keep keep a closer tab on my personal journey and get my, we- uh, my twice per month email right to your inbox, check it out at joshacknow.com slash join. I'll link to it in the description of wherever you're listening to this to on. Thank you again, have a great one, and hope to see you in the next episode.